said, go ahead and go to about 10 after. He didn't say which hour, which day. <laughs> <laughs> just, just kidding. Uh -huh. <laughs> Turn with me your Bible to 1 Samuel chapter number 17. <laughs> familiar passage, I'm sure to most of you. 1 Samuel chapter number 17. Uh, it's a lengthy passage, so I won't, I won't have you stand. I only do. But before we get started, I just want to ask you how many had enough to eat tonight? Yes. How many are ready to go to sleep? Yes. <laughs> All right. I usually make this deal at the beginning every time I preach. The, the more you say amen or hallelujah or praise God, faster I talk. Faster I talk. I you hey. Hey. You got it down already. I'll try to keep you awake tonight if you try to keep me awake tonight. Yeah. Yeah. We'll amen. Thanks for tonight. First Samuel chapter number 17, we're going to start. Verse number 22, and David and a left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he walked with them, behold, there came a champion of the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistine, and spake according to the same words. And David heard them. And all the men of Israel went, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel, or yes, and the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to the fire of Israel he has come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall done what shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him in this manner, saying, So shall be done the man that killeth him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why, why, comest, thou, why comest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. Thou art come down, and thou mayest see the battle. The familiar verse number 29, David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? Let's pray. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you be lifted up tonight. Lord, once again, uh, it's not my message that's going forward. Lord, that you be my words, my thoughts. Uh, Lord, erase all the cares of the day. Help me to focus. Lord, again, if your word come forth, and that you give me things to say as they need to be said. Lord, we love you and we give you an honor and glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. A few things. And I know most of you are familiar with the story of David and Goliath. And if you if you if you get irritated by me pacing back and forth, this is how I talk on the cell phone, so this is this is just the way it's gonna be. So <laughs> your neck may get sore as I pace back and forth. But here you have the setting that it, the Israel army is against the Philistine army, and they're about to do battle. Here Goliath, most of you know, Goliath goes out every day and begins to mock. Look over in the same chapter, verse, verse number 8. And he was talking about Goliath. And he cried out to the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are you come out to set, or, set your battle in array? Am, I, am not I a Philistine? And you the servants of Saul? Choose you a man for, for you and let him come down to me. For sake of time, I won't read the rest of that. But I want you to get the picture there that Goliath comes out and begins to mock the, 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 all, the Israel Almighty God's army. By the way, that is God's chosen people. Whether we yes. like it or not, it is his chosen people. It is still his chosen Amen. people. It is still his army, and it's still the armies of the living God. Now Goliath begins to come out and defy. And I was wondering what that word defy meant. So I looked it up. The word defy actually has the 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 attitude of a challenge, or a dare, or, um, I can't read my own handwriting. <laughs> um, yeah, that's one of those challenges. Uh, to withstand. So picture here Goliath, every day, walks out, stands on top of the mountain. I don't know where he stood. This is my, my version of it. He stood, stands on top of the mountain and begins to mock 
the armies of the living God. Something different happened this day. Look at verse number 23. Here Goliath wakes up as he did every morning. He goes out and he begins to say the same thing he said every morning. The end of verse 23, it says, And David heard them. Hmm. Speak to him the words. And David heard them. You say, why is that a big deal? Well, because you read there that all the men in the Israel army, when they heard Goliath and saw Goliath, they did two things. They ran. They yeah. were afraid. Right. But David heard them. Hmm. Verse number 11. Mighty King Saul. When Saul and all the Israel heard the words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Jump over to verse number 24 that we just read. And, when, and all the men of Israel went and saw the man fled from him and were sore afraid. You say, it's interesting. Well, 2 Timothy says this. This is once again a familiar verse that for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of sound mind. Amen. Amen. Here they are, the armies of Israel. King Saul, you read back the chapter before, chapter 17, which would be 16. Forgive me, I'm from Texas, I'm slow. Um, <laughs> you read chapter 16, Saul had just went and conquered the Amalekites. God delivered him from such a great battle. Now Saul didn't listen to God completely. We know that, that account from the Bible. But they just defeated the Malachites, a whole nation or a group of people. He's defeated them. He stands before one man, and he cowers, and he's afraid. God's not giving us a spirit of fear. <laughs> Verse number 28. So Eliab, his eldest brother, praise the Lord, I have an eldest brother, and praise God for him. <laughs> We'll see why in a minute. Uh, Eliab, his old, uh, Eliab, his oldest brother, when he, when he, that's talking about David, spoke, spoke unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, why comest, down, why, why comest thou down hither? His old brother, his eldest brother, what a blessing they are. <laughs> if you have an older brother, you know what I'm talking about. He comes down, and he says, David, why are you even here? He says, I know why you came down here, David, because you just wanted to see the battle, and you wanted to I don't see that, David. We'll talk about that in a minute. I don't see that, David. But even King Saul tried to discourage. Look at verse 33. Even King Saul tried to discourage David. He said, Saul, or in, and Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. Thou art but a youth. And he is a man of war from his youth. The mighty King Saul. Could you imagine? I don't picture David as a very tall, big man. He said there before King Saul. The king that stood ahead and shoulders above everybody else. There he is standing. He's like, oh, man, this is going to be great. King Saul's going to get me all pumped up. He's going to tell me something. Oh, man, he's going to get me all encouraged to go fight the giant. And he says, David. Well, sorry. David. <laughs> <laughs> David, there's no way you can go fight him. Here. I mean, in my words, he just said, David, look at you. <laughs> You're serious? You're a little guy. You can't fight this guy. What an encouragement David, or King Saul was to David. For days, Goliath stood. For days, he stood up there. So where do you get that? It's because it says, you read in there, that in the beginning of the chapter, it says that, as he said before. So these were day in and day out. He was standing there defying and mocking God. But nobody did anything. Nobody stood up. Nobody said a word. And when one guy, David, came to, to stand up and say a word, they discouraged him. They said, you can't fight him. You're just too small. You know, we do the same thing. I'm just going to be transparent with you tonight. If you get mad at me, I'm sorry if you're not really getting mad at me, but we'll talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody still doesn't say anything. You know, we do the same thing. Yes. You get that young convert. He gets excited. He gets saved. He wants to go out door knocking and win the world. And what do we do? Oh, well, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go some other time. I, I haven't been here long enough to know any of you, so I'll, if this fits you, then it fits you. If it doesn't, okay. But we just discourage them. We say, oh, you can't do that. Yeah. Oh, you can't. No, you just, there's ain't no way you can do that. Ephesians 4.29 says this, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. 
but that which is is good to the use of you yes. know what that next word is? Edifying. edifying. I asked you that so I know when you're awake. <laughs> Amen. That which is good to the use of edifying that we may minister grace unto the hearers. The word edifying means to build up. They knew I was getting the building sooner or later. <laughs> <laughs> the word edify means to build up, to strengthen. The Greek word actually has the idea of to build a temple for a church. Now apply that to the verse. Speak that which is good to the use of building up, that they may minister grace into the years. David said, is there not a cause? You know what? David knew there was a cause. Look at verse number 26. David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, what shall be done to this? What should be done to the man that killed, killed this Philistine? Skip down the end of the verse there. It says, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? David knew that there was a cause. David knew that God was great and that God could deliver him from this Philistine. And God, he knew that God would see him through. And David was not willing to let this Philistine, as he says, this uncircumcised Philistine, stand and mock God hey. another day. What do we do, Christian? David said, who is this man that he defies the armies of the living God? Who is this man? See, he's just a man. They're like David, but he's huge. He's 11 foot tall. He'll kill you. He's just a man. But I serve a God. A God who is able. A God that can deliver me. I get to see David before King Saul, and I'm probably getting way ahead of myself here, but, but David before King Saul, and he says, King, King Saul, you know what happened? I was there watching my dad's sheep one day, and there came a lion. That lion, you'll never believe this, that lion reached out and grabbed the sheep, a lamb. That lion took it. He said, you know what I did, King Saul? I walked over there. I grabbed that lion by the beard, and I pulled him to me, and I said, give me that, and threw him off. You don't believe me, read it. And he said, you know what? That lie came at me again. He said, you know what God allowed me to do by his strength? That lie came at me and I killed him. King Saul made me chuckle. He says, oh, no, King Saul, you don't understand. Next time a bear came to me and did the same thing. He took a lamb and I, I'm not going to let that happen. I reached over there, grabbed that bear by the, by the hair, dragged him down, and I said, give me that. And let him go. And that bear came after me. You know what God allowed me to do, King Saul? He allowed me to kill that bear. Yeah. I said, King Saul, the guy out there is just a man. That's right. He knew there was a cause. Hey. Mm. First John 1 John 4, 1.44 says this. You are of God, little children. You have overcome them. I love this. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Yeah. Hey. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. This is the Hebrews. We may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what men shall do to me. You know what the neat thing is as a Christian? The worst thing anybody could ever do to me is send me to heaven. Right. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yes. The worst thing on the world that could ever happen to me is they're going to send me to heaven. <laughs> Some days I'm, I'm volunteering. <laughs> you know, we've all been there. David said, is there not a cause? All this leads to my next point. What is our cause? Why are we here? Why are we having business conferences? Why, why are we doing what we do? Why did we go door knocking this morning, preacher? Because of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. He's our cause. Amen. David knew this, even though this was before Christ would come in the physical sense to the world. David knew this, that there was a cause. There was something that we should stand up for. And he was to stand against that giant. Paul said this in 1 Corinthians, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. I'm guilty just as much as the next guy talking about football and cars and, and buildings and, and all this stuff. I just said not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Galatians said this, God, but God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus. That's right. By whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. <laughs> David knew all this. 
He knew what was going on. He knew this is this is just a man. It was God. It was God's power that would help him to conquer that giant. It was God's power that helped him conquer that lion. It was God's power that helped him defeat that bear. And he wasn't worried about it. Why? Because Jesus Christ is his cause. I love this verse in Isaiah when we talk about just when I talk about Christ, I gotta go to this verse, Isaiah 53. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yes. These next few words are sad, but we we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Chastisement of our peace on him. And with his stripes, we are healed. You know, what's our cause? Jesus Christ is our cause. Why? Because he came on the cross and died for us. Yeah. He paid for my sins, for, for my chastisements were put upon him. Yeah. My iniquities were put upon him. When I stood guilty before God, God Jesus Christ said, wait a second. I'll take care of him. And the glorious thing is, he doesn't just take care of me. He takes care of you. He takes care of you, 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 you. Amen. Jesus Christ is our cause. Sometimes we forget our cause. This leads me to the last point. Why should this be our cause? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Why should this be our cause? Why should we go door knocking? Why should we pass out tracks? Why should we do all this stuff? People have never heard the gospel. People have never heard about Jesus Christ. Missionaries, why would, why would you give up your life and go to a foreign country? You're crazy. <laughs> why? Because people are dying and going to a devil's heaven. That's a simple fact. Why do we do all this stuff? What is our cause? That people are dying without Jesus. And we know that dying without Jesus, could, you're going to go to a place called heaven. You can't spend eternity with that's why. That's why we do what we do. That's our cause. Why else? Why should we do this? And I'm not going to really get political with you, but because America will reap what we sow. You say, Brother Matt, what do you know about that? You're just a young guy. Well, I know a lot about that because I, I like to study history. <laughs> America used to be a, I don't know how to phrase it exactly, America used to be a very religious place. Yeah. <laughs> People used to love God in America. Yeah. yeah. America, we reap what we sow, and it's our fault. Amen. Yeah. I can't say it any other way. I can't put it any nicer, but it's our fault, Christian. We have the truth. We have that thing that we're supposed to. We have the word of God. We're supposed to stand up and proclaim against the Goliaths of this world. Hey. But you know what we do so many times? We run. Hey, is Goliath back out there? Where to go? And we hide. We don't say a word. And we let people die every day. I'm not pointing at you guys. I'm just as guilty. Why do we sit, why Christians, why do we just sit there and do nothing while the Philistines of this world stand up and mock God? If you're at work or you're construction side or something, somebody begins to mock God, what do you do? You run and hide like mighty King Saul and the rest of the Israel army? army? Or you stand up like David and say, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're not going to defy my God. He's bigger than you are. Hey, do you know that line? <laughs> I could just, I don't know. Did, did, did David get a little smart aleck if that's a word? Um, in front of Goliath, I don't know. Did he go, <laughs> Goliath, you have no idea, buddy. <laughs> so many times we sit there and we do nothing. In America, we're reading what we sow. Many times we say we can't. What we really mean, we won't. Hey. Oh, brother, I can't do that. I can't go soul with it. I can't knock on doors. I, I'm just, I, I can't talk very well. Yeah. Sometimes it means that we just won't or not willing to. We forgot that God's on our side. <laughs> For the most part, we forgot that God's going right there with us. David knew that. When he drew back the sling, he knew that. He says, God's with me. Who can stand against me? Close this verse. Luke 137. For with God, nothing 